and they're being asked to to house illegal immigrants. No joke, no joke. You would think this was being made up, but it's not. And, and so let me get this right. Let's get this right. So, so the government leaves the door open. The government leaves the door open for illegal immigrants to come in. The government also simultaneously makes it harder to earn a living in America, i.e. inflation. The government over-regulates our economy to where you you have to just scratch and claw to, to make any money. But we let the illegals in, in the front door, wide open, and then they want you and me, <laughs> and, and you and me, sure, I'll be done with Without our tax revenue, tax revenue, there would be no government, or if there was, there would be a What's it in middle night, eh? Because all they would have was tariffs. And you and me, we're supposed to house the illegals. No, 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 I am not sheltering illegal immigrants. In my home, in my church, in my fill in the blank. Nope. And this, this compassion card, and we need to have a big heart, and the church needs to share the gospel and take this opportunity to love on people. No, 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 no. Our system is not working. You and me and everybody else are being taken advantage of. And it's not just for us to carry that load. It's not just, it's not right. This is like one of the basic functions of government that they're supposed to take care of. So right now we got a government that's into the EBT card business and they're into the Medicare and the Medicaid and we've got social security and we've got all these programs. And if, you know, if you're an illegal immigrant and you want a flip phone, we'll take care of you. And we got all these programs, all these bureaucratic agencies And, and we got to do all that well, right? We've got a bloated military and they've got billions that goes into these black holes and they literally don't know where the money went. And we can't audit the Department of Defense because that would just be a terrible thing. And, and we're sending billions to Ukraine and we don't know where that's going either. I mean, come on. And you want us to audit the money going to Ukraine? I mean, come on. That's a waste of time. We can't audit that money. That would just take too many resources. But the, the American taxpayers, they ought to pick up the illegal immigrants, house them in their bedroom next door, and just be happy with it. Just be happy with it. But back to the primary function of government. Ensuring that we actually have a visible and forcible border is one of the, one of the basic functions of government. And it's one of the most basic, basic functions of local government. So if somebody starts building a dwelling on your property, what's the first thing you're going to do? And assuming they're doing it without permission, you're going to call the cops. You're going to call the cops and you're going to say, I've got this stranger building a dwelling on my property. And you're going to go to court and you're going to, you know, press charges and you're going to get them off of your property because it's sovereign, right? You own it, don't you? <laughs> we got this thing. We got this big thing called America way bigger than mine or your property. And we're letting people just set up shop. Just set up shop. You can come in, you don't have to work, you don't have to contribute to the system, you don't have to wait in line. You just cross the Rio Grande. That's all you gotta do, cross the Rio Grande and we'll take care of your trip from there. We'll bus you around the country, we'll fly you around the country, we'll give you a go phone. And if you're lucky, we might even set you up with a house and food, and shelter, and water. <clears throat> and if we got to have our way as the Biden administration, we'll even get you a job. Quite, quite astonishing, and one of the most unjust acts going on in America today. So no, I'm not housing the criminals at my house. I'll let you guys figure it out. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people.
My name is Abraham Hamilton III, and this is the Hamilton Minute. The prophet Isaiah diagnosed the condition of the rebellious nation of Judah prior to its conquest and exile by Nebuchadnezzar in chapter 59 of his book. He explained that Judah's transgressions separated the nation from Yahweh. Due to Judah's sinfulness, truth had fallen in the streets. The consequences for their rejection of truth was that lawlessness abounded. Similarly, truth has been rejected in our nation. Abundant lawlessness is the consequence for a nation that has turned away from the Lord. Repentance is what is needed in our nation, starting in the church. Righteousness is what exalts a nation. Listen each weekday from 5 to 6 p.m. Central for The Hamilton Corner with Abraham Hamilton III, public policy analyst for the American Family Association. This is Raising God the Girls Minute with Patty Garibay of American Heritage Girls. In today's cultural climate, the question of how Christians should educate children has garnered time in the spotlight. It's an important decision. Out of all the choices Christians have in educating their most valuable gift, their children, from public school to private Christian education to homeschooling, how do you weigh out priorities in your girl's education? No matter which school lane you choose, as a believer, it's important to consider multiple layers, like cultivating a lifelong integrated faith, access to developmental resources according to her needs, a safe cultural environment in her school, just to name a few. It's also okay to begin her education in one lane and change to another as her needs change. Above all, the same God who guides you will also walk with your girl, no matter where and how she's educated. We are all called to raise up the next generation of Christian leaders. Learn more about empowering girls at RaisingGodlyGirls.com. Hey friends, it's Jessica Peck, Dr. Nurse Mama, as your one-minute parenting coach. Teens are navigating a swift current of cultural change. Chances are they will voice an opinion that is misguided. You can respond in three ways. One, ignore it and shut the conversation down. Two, respond impulsively from a place of emotion, lecturing and not listening. Or three, initiate an honest conversation knowing you'll be asked questions for which you do not have the answers unless you actively direct conversation and seek influence through relationship building your teen's views will be shaped by their peers the media and outside cultural influences if you just tell them what to think you miss out on guiding their questions and concerns where to start be a good listener I'll see you on the Dr. Nurse Mama podcast on American Family Radio. At the Core podcast are available at AFR.net. Now, back to At the Core on American Family Radio. Welcome back to At the Core here on American Family Radio. Walker Wildman here with you today on the program. Well, uh, one uh, frequent guest on the program is our good friend Steve Tiber, founder and uh, CEO, president of Eight Days of Hope, and uh, been a long, long time partner ministry with American Family Radio, American Family Association. It go, we go back a long, long ways, and we're still partnering together today. Hey, Steve, welcome uh, back to the program. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate a lot going on in the world right now, and appreciate what you and AFR uh, uh, do as far as taking a stand for truth so again thank you hey man hey steve uh, last time i had you on you guys were prepping for your trip to florida fort myers specifically and that's uh that's under your belt um and you're past that now and thank the lord for that a lot of uh, hundreds of, of families were ministered to there in fort myers uh give us give us a brief recap of, that's not our main focus today but give us a brief recap because that was a hey, that was a full trip i mean that was a full rebuilding trip. yeah yeah you know this year we've already been to selma alabama with the tornadoes, Erie, Mississippi with the tornadoes, but we had a rebuilding event where thousands of volunteers came from around the country, Turkey, and, you know, in the aftermath, roughly a year later, we are in Fort Myers, and you're right, we were able to just love and serve hundreds of families, and it was an amazing time of fellowship. We got to just see so many people um, take huge steps forward in being able to live in their homes, enjoy their homes, and so it was a unique trip, but um, you're right, we got some other things going on right now as well um, you know this movie sound of freedom uh which which i absolutely hate that the movie needed to be made but so thankful that the church has opened his eyes to realize that this problem is real 
traffic in Israel. So we've been helping out with natural disasters and in the aftermath of, some people say human disasters, but so thankful that we can be uh, a light to those who've been rescued. So yeah, we're, we're quite busy right now. Well, Steve, th this is, you guys have been doing this for, for a couple of years now. I mean, how, uh, you, by the way, let's jump into the Safe House Ministry, which you got, that's a whole yeah. arm of your of your ministry, but but you guys have been doing this for, for a couple, if not several years. Give us the time frame here. You know, about four years ago, God just clearly showed us that we have about 50,000 volunteers, half of them skilled, who have traveled with us, and they, and they wanted to do something more than just a couple eight-day periods during the year. And so our first safe house we ever ministry ever worked with was Elijah Rising in Houston. And since then, four years ago, we have now uh, completed 12 major projects, uh, multiple ones in Texas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Indianapolis, Tim Tebow. Frank Reich, uh, the foundation, Tim Tebow Foundation, Frank and Linda Reich, now the head coach of the Carolina Panthers, the project in Indianapolis. We've done something in New York, and we just launched our first ever campus. So we are building a campus with a ministry called Safe Harbor. SafeHarborOhio.org is, is their website. And we are constructing 11 buildings on this 30 acres of beautiful land that was donated to the ministries so we can provide a safe place for children children uh, who've been rescued from trafficking and this will be the largest campus when it's done in full will be the largest campus in the country and kids will be able to get emotional physical and spiritual support and, and i you know i say the word kid and as soon as i, I mention the word kid you know just you know it's, it's something shoots up my spine that we're talking about children who to no fault of their own have been trafficked and so sound of freedom has brought a lot of attention uh, to the need and now the church, I think, is starting to realize that this is real. It happens outside of New Orleans, Las Vegas, and New York City. It's happening in Wichita, Kansas, South Haven, Mississippi, uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, and everywhere in between. And so uh, this campus, phase one of six buildings, uh, they'll have three cottages, a school, a chapel, an administration building. But when this campus is done, this six and a half million dollar campus, it'll open up in, in early 2024. Uh, children from around the country will come here to get the help they need. Steve, one of the most uh, compelling and heart-wrenching uh, radio spots that I that I've heard, at least from from your ministry, is the one where you talk about, you know, the number of mm -hmm. tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of animal shelters in America, but but the the lack of of, of enough shelters for women and children that are that are getting out of this, uh, getting rescued out of this uh, child and human trafficking travesty um it, it there's got to be a, a, you guys are, are providing a huge need here but there's got to be a need otherwise you guys wouldn't be in it i mean what is what is the need like out there is there just tons of places for people to go for this type of type of uh, a rescue and recovery or is this something that still needs to be invested in yeah, unfortunately, Walker, um, that isn't the case. Uh, when when you listen to that spot, it mentions about 600 safe places for someone to go to rest their, uh, their head at night and get a good night's sleep, knowing that they're safe. Now, some of those safe places don't offer emotional, physical, and spiritual support. It's just a, it's just a place they can go to bed uh, at night for three, five, ten days, get some food, and, and, and then re refocus on what's next. We're, what we're doing is we're partnering with ministries that are providing a safe place for adults and children who can stay and live there sometimes multiple years at no charge in their love down. And, and there's house moms that live with these children in some of the adult facilities we built, like in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And so, you know, our goal is, is to continue to use the volunteer base for the Atheist of Hope and build these facilities. Uh, providing labor at no charge. And so most of the time it's just about the ministry or us raising the money for the materials. But again, this is going to be the largest campus, 30 acres of land. It's going to be, it's an amazing, amazing campus. Uh, we've already framed three cottages. We're framing the chapel and the school as we speak. Uh, the thought is though we'll open up uh, beginning of 2024. So the need is great, uh, but God has called his people to, to, to awaken to this problem. It's evil. It's out of control because of pornography. Mm. So if you're a man listening today, know that every time you even take five minutes and sneak into something and take a look at pornography, we're driving it. Us mm. men, we're driving it. And we've got to be the men that God's called us to be and say enough's enough. These are kids, your kids and our kids and grandkids and 
uh, us men, we've got to say enough's enough and, and, and stop that that uh, horrific slide. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one thing we talk about on the program uh, often is the, 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 the fatherlessness uh, that goes on in America and how that's that's largely a driver of many of our societal ills. Hey, uh, folks, I just want to encourage you to donate and go to 8daysofhope.com, 8daysofhope.com. They have an entire page that's devoted to their safe house ministry. You can actually keep up to date on what's going on in, in their Ohio project and all the other projects that they're working on. So if you were driven by and really convicted by what that uh, uh, what the, the, the new film um, Sound of Freedom uh, displayed, that tragedy there, you can actually do something about it. And Eight Days of Hope is one of those ministries. Hey, Steve, um, what this is a huge project in Ohio. This is not just like a three-month or a six-month. I mean, you guys, what you're talking about is a two-year-plus investment. Tell us about it. Yeah, it is. And, and everything from the dirt work to the infrastructure, um, you know, from, from pouring the foundations to, you know, to giving them the keys to a completed school and a completed medical building. You know, it's going to take a lot of effort, uh, but we're making a lot of progress and safe. A sound of freedom is bringing attention uh, to to the challenge. Um, but again, so thankful that we're able to, to build this campus. It, it, this campus is a is, is a duplication of a campus that is uh, similar in size in Austin, Texas, and, and we're really excited. You know, Walker, we're excited to be a part of the solution, but I'll say this. So many listeners probably right now, they just don't understand that 83% of children who are trafficked in America are America's citizens. I think sometimes we all think it's the illegal immigrant, and that, and that happens. I, I get it. It does. But Walker, do you know that 17% of kids who are trafficked are trafficked by a family member? Mm-hmm. Right here in America. And, and that's why, again, it's not an easy subject to talk about. It's something probably your pastor isn't dying into a four-point series, part series. Because how do you talk about this with kids in the congregation? But church, we, we need to take our blinders off. This is real. It's rampant. Men, we're the driving force behind it. We are. There is no customers for pornography. If no one went to a massage parlor, if we didn't, you know, attend a strip joint, you know, in, in your city, this would this would end. This would end. It's that simple. And so again, you know, pray for the ministry of eight days of hope as we, we build safe harbor and, and we're just so thankful that we can be a small part of the solution. Hey Amen. And you're exactly right. Churches, pastors, church leaders, and men have to speak out on this issue. We can't shy away from it, be embarrassed about it. We have to hit this issue head on, as we do other issues. We should not uh, be, be afraid to touch on any biblical issue uh, that has eternal significance. Hey, Steve, thanks so much for coming on. We'll, we'll continue to highlight this, and of course, we'll have you on again. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Have a great day. All right. Thanks, Steve. That's uh, Steve Tiber, founder and CEO of 8daysofhope.com, 8daysofhope.com. And uh, they they got their start. Uh, Steve and his dad got their start, actually, around Hurricane Katrina back in 05 and 06. And then um, uh, the Lord has just prospered the ministry now, and uh, Steve is heading it up. They've got multiple arms, multiple divisions, and one of those divisions is the Safe House Ministry, and uh, they're building safe houses year-round all around the country. The main project they're working on now is there in Ohio, but you can go to their website, 8daysofhope.com, and check it out, and of course, support their work, not only through prayer, not only through volunteering, but also through your financial support. Um, uh, the passage I was talking about earlier is actually out of First Timothy. Uh, before we had Steve on in the first segment, um, I was talking about providing first and primarily for your your loved ones, for your family, for those within your near proximity, and then of course once you've done that, God calls us to bless others and uh, provide for others as well. Specifically, widows and orphans is what. Uh, the biblical mandate is for the church and for church leadership. But First Timothy 5, 8 says, uh, but if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for the members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So that principle there, you can extrapolate that um, and apply it to what's going on in our nation. And uh, we're neglecting as a nation, as a society, as a culture, uh, the very uh, one.
funds that we're supposed to be investing in and caring for and providing for them. Um, and then we're, we're, we're going out and skipping over uh, the ones that the Bible has commanded us to take care of. And we're caring for people um, that have broken the law and have disrespected our nation and our, and our, our laws and our constitution. We got it completely backwards. But you know, when you look at scripture, there's also another passage that talks about the days in which uh, men will call right wrong and wrong right. I mean, that's just that's just where we are in so many regards. I mean, whether you're talking about abortion, um, whether you're talking about marriage, human sexuality, or even this illegal immigration issue, anybody who says anything that's right, noble, and true, and biblical, they get shouted down, and they're they're told that they can't. They can't be in charge, you know, you're a bigot. Uh, but then the people who are promoting the wickedness and the evil and the wrong, they're told that they're right, they're noble, they're good. They're virtuous members of society. Boy, do we have it backwards. A um, few other stories I want to get to before I wrap up this segment, and we'll have Chris with us on in a few minutes. But um, I want to play clip three, speaking of getting things backwards. This is Arizona Governor Katie Hobbs talking about how the government ought not be in in the business of regulating abortion, clip three. Right now, Arizona bans most abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. The proposed language in this measure would guarantee the right to an abortion up until fetal viability, which is uh, essentially 22 to 24 weeks of pregnancy. Do you personally back that timeline? Well, I, again, I think these are decisions best left, best left to healthcare professionals and their patients. And um, and I support people's ability to make their own personal healthcare decisions without the interference of politicians. Well, there you have it. That's uh, Arizona Governor Katie Hobbs. Um, you heard what she said there? She said, well, you know, on the abortion issue, I just think, um, um, you know, the government basically ought not be involved. The, 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 the politicians ought not be telling women what they can do with their, you know, reproductive decisions. Oh, really? Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. The government shouldn't be involved unless we, unless we outlaw abortion. Then the government ought to give them their constitution.